Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to do my annual candy corn recipe. Last year, I did candy corn pizza. If you missed that video, I will put the link up above and down below. I took a DiGiorno frozen pizza, topped it with candy corn, baked it as instructed, and then I tasted it. Yeah, so today I'm back with a candy corn recipe. Candy corn, if you've never seen or heard of candy corn before, it is something that comes out every year here in the US around this time of year, fall, Halloween, and it looks like this. Comes in bags like this. Brock's is probably the most popular brand. And these little wedges are supposed to represent kernels of corn. They have a very distinctive smell, kind of caramelly, vanilla, very saccharinely sweet. And in terms of flavor, <laughs> hmm. They taste a lot like they smell. Very, very artificially sweet, kind of like a fake honey, fake vanilla flavor to them that at the end is really kind of cloying, kind of caramelly flavored. But for me, I think what it's got going for it is its texture. It's simultaneously crumbly, waxy, and slightly chewy. And in terms of level of sweetness, it is very sweet, as sweet as say fudge and more similar in terms of flavor to fudge that you find in the UK. It's got this kind of interesting matte finish, but it has a little bit of chew to it, which I really like. The flavor is kind of cloying the end. There's like this kind of artificial sweet flavor to it that kind of lingers, but somehow they're kind of addictive too. With the amount of sugar in there, there's somehow something about this makes them very addictive. You're just like, oh, I'll have another one. I'll have another one. So generally speaking, it seems like there's two camps of candy corn people. You either love it or you hate it. I'm actually in between. I don't really care for it. I don't really despise it either. I'm sort of just like, oh, candy corn, and I'll eat my one candy corn a year. At any rate, because it's the candy corn season, I thought I'd do a recipe using candy corn. And I'm going to make candy corn elotes. So elotes, if you're not familiar with it, is Mexican style corn on the cob, and it is absolutely phenomenal. I did a recipe for it a couple years ago. I'll put the link down below in case you missed it. But basically you take a corn on the cob, you can boil it, but oftentimes it's roasted over coals to get a nice roasted flavor to it. And then it's coated with mayo, sometimes with butter, crumbled cheese and chili powder and some lime juice. Absolutely heavenly. One of the best forms of corn in my opinion ever. Absolutely smashing. So today I'm going to be making a candy corn version of elotes, taking my candy corn, making a whole corn, and then smearing it with mayonnaise, smearing it with butter and cheese and lime juice and seeing how it goes. <laughs> Now, I love to take credit for this recipe, but I actually was inspired by the Pizzle blog written by Dennis Lee. It is absolutely hilarious. If you haven't seen it, I will put the link down below. He has some amazingly heinous recipes <laughs> on his blog, and he did a version of this. So technically speaking, I think Dennis made esquites, which is corn that has been taken off the cob and mixed in the similar combination of condiments of mayo and butter and lime juice and cheese but he calls his elotes. But my understanding of elotes is actually the whole corn on the cob. So I decided to make the whole entire corn on the cob using candy corn. So let's go ahead and get started making this crazy recipe. <laughs> I've got a bowl of candy corn. This is a one bag. I believe this is 11 ounces and this will make a small size corn. So I've got a little square of parchment paper so my candy corn doesn't stick to the plate. So to recreate the cob, we need something for the kernels to stay into. So today I'm gonna to be using marzipan. So marzipan is almond paste. It is dessert often found in Europe and it's just a paste of ground up almonds and sugar. And it's kind of like modeling clay. You can also use fondant. I think that would work perfectly. The marzipan comes in a tube like this. It dries out pretty quickly, so you want to keep it in a plastic bag while you're working with it. You just knead it to get nice and soft. So my first idea was to take a log of the marzipan and then just take the candy corn and insert them all the way around. But I found that the candy corn did not want to stay, so I came up with another option, and it is this. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a ball of marzipan, warm it up in your hands, and press it into a disc on, on the bottom of your parchment paper. Like that. Then we're gonna take 12 of the candy corn and arrange them in a circle all the way around. And you wanna get them as tightly packed as possible. Now, I was doing this late at night, it takes a long time. So if you're gonna make this candy corn in lotus or candy corn that looks like corn, give yourself a lot of time and patience. Okay, so now we've got a hole here and we're gonna shore that up with another piece of Mars pan right there. 
Now, because the candy corn taper a bit right here, it gets a bit thinner, we need to bulk up this area with more Mars pen. And I did that by making a snake and going around the middle here. As we build this, the candy corn kind of wants to cave in a bit, and so we're kind of shoring it up with the Mars pen so that our corn is nice and long and straight. Okay, so that's shored up now. Now we continue with another 12 candy corn all the way around. And I have learned that candy corn are all a little bit different. Some are wider, some are thinner. So you're going to have some imperfections in this. You can always take a knife and make adjustments to your candy corn if they need to be thinner. If you need wider ones, well, you're gonna to have to just search. And then again, we're going to shore up the middle with another ball of the dough. And then as you build up on this, you can kind of press and kind of work. But in the beginning, your first few layers are gonna be a little bit fragile. Be patient with it. Okay, so another layer and another layer, another layer, until we get something that resembles corn. Now, in order to make the corn kind of taper, what we do is we push the corn in a little bit further towards the center, because we're trying to taper it to the end of the corn cob. So that has a little bit fewer. Now we're gonna shore this up again, cut the little white part off the end of the candy corn, and we insert them around. And then on the top, we kind of just fill it in, again with the broken candy corn pieces. Ta-da! Of course, if you want this to really look like a corn cob, you're gonna stack this much taller, and this is what you'll get. <laughs> Isn't it great? Now this was an entire bag, maybe a little bit more of candy corn. It is dense, it is heavy, and it looks like cartoon corn. <laughs> Isn't it great? I love how it turned out. I did two of them. Here's my second one. This is my first iteration. And I definitely like the one that's a little bit longer. It looks a lot more like corn. <laughs>now that we have our candy corn corn built, we're going to go ahead and put the handle, which is a stick. This is a candy apple stick. Puncture the bottom of our corn. This is going to be our handle. Okay, we have our candy corn corn on a stick. <laughs> now we're going to top it with our toppings. The first thing we're going to do is slather on some mayo. Yep, mayo. This is Mayonnaise, just mayonnaise. Next, we're gonna add some squeezable butter. Oh yeah. Spread that out. This is gonna be interesting. Authentic elotes is absolutely incredible. You should definitely try it. This, on the other hand, is gonna be heinous. I know it is, but I wanna confirm it, right? <laughs> now that we have our butter and mayo on, we're gonna add our cotija cheese. Sprinkle that on. We're going to sprinkle all over our corn. Next, we're gonna add some chili powder. Oh my gosh, this is so heavy. <laughs> and absolutely ridiculous. Buen provecho. Oh man. Mm hmm. Yeah. And it tastes exactly as you would imagine. Absolutely heinous. It's totally disgusting. <laughs> the initial bite you get is of the cheese and the butter and the mayo, and then it's just saccharinely sweet with that fake honey flavor. It's initially kind of salty and sweet, but then it finishes off with the familiar candy corn, which is just lastingly, cloyingly sweet, which is kind of a good way to finish it because you don't have that initial mayo bite. Let's give it another bite. Yeah, gross. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. Not surprisingly, the combination of butter, mayo, and cheese and candy corn is not a good one. Actually, I forgot to put lime on it. Maybe lime will help. I forgot to put the fresh lime. Let's put some of that on there. Maybe that'll cut some of the sweetness and some of the, the mayo. Oh, no. <laughs> that makes it worse. Wow. That's abhorrent. <laughs> hmm. I think that's the first time I've ever put lime on something and it just had a terrible reaction. Yeah, that just made it totally abhorrent. It actually made that taste like vomit. That bit of acidity and the kind of dairied quality of the mayo just made it taste and smell and the cheese like vomit. Gross. Don't, don't, don't make this. <laughs> Go and make real elotes. It is now fall. We're going into winter now here in New England, so it is not corn season. But if it is corn season where you are, definitely make the real deal. I promise you it's one of the best ways to eat corn. Absolutely phenomenal. Alrighty, so there you have it, my annual candy corn recipe. I hope you guys enjoy that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Subscribe, like, and I shall see you in the next one. Tulu, take care. Bye! <laughs>